What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about the Real Housewives of Dubai, season one, episode 11, Salty Waters. So be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and let's get around right into it. So we pick up where we left off with Ayan telling Stanbury, oh, I am much more successful than you in every other way, blah, blah, blah. Um, Stanbury, she immediately gets up from the table and she walks off. We can see she's kind of just like, okay, I'm not dealing with this. Which really sucks because it's her trip and it was a gift to her for her wedding, you know. I, I, full disclosure, I started kind of warming up to Stanbury in the beginning of this episode and kind of in the last episode. I don't know, I feel like she was kind of poised as like the villain for a while at first, but now I'm kind of be like, mm. I'm seeing some other sides to her, you know. Uh, so Stanbury leaves the table, Brooks follows her, and Stanbury's pretty emotional. Meanwhile, Ayan's at the table, she's... She's just like, you know, oh, Stanbury's asked me what I, what I do three times already. Um, she's just trying to piss me off. And it's just like, well, Stanbury didn't even ask you what you did. Like, she was literally talking to um, the table and she was like, oh, it's like if you have your own business, like, giving an example. Like, she didn't directly ask Ayan, what do you do for, like, that just wasn't the case at all. At least from what we see from the editing, you know, maybe it's, but... But we see it's not the case at all, you know what I mean? Um, we see Brooks comforting Stanbury, um, and Stanbury, she says that Ayan's always trying to put her down. She feels as though in order to lift herself up, she's putting Stanbury down, essentially. Um, then Nina, she goes to join the Carolines, and Stanbury actually tells Nina something. I remember Nina and Stanbury are sharing a room, you know, they're cozying up, uh, according to Lisa. Um, and so yeah, Car uh, Stanbury tells Nina something, she's like, oh, you... You never stick up for me in the moment. Um, you can't always be Switzerland. Like, sometimes you just have to say something. And, um, and Stanbury's smoking, meanwhile. And someone on Twitter was like, I love seeing housewives smoke. It just seems, so, they seem so unhinged. And it's like, um, it's always the British ones. They're like, Stanbury, Lisa Vanderpump, seem, I guess she smoked at the beginning. Um, but yeah, and then Nina says that there's a lot of miscommunication going on, and... Stanbury, basically, she wasn't being shady. She was, like, just talking, and... But Ayan just took it the wrong way. She took it as though Ayan was... Um, Ayan took it as though Stanbury was, like, coming for her, trying to talk shit, you know? Um, and yeah, and then Lisa, in a confessional, she's like, of course Chanel Ayan is more um, successful than Caroline Stanbury. But, so she agrees with that, and she hypes up. She's like, from the pages of Vogue to the pages of Instagram, like, comparing their, like social prominence or whatever but lisa does say she's like but you know ayan is in the wrong she shouldn't have said that you know but she's like of course she of course you're more successful but you don't say it you know especially on their own trip um but yeah and then ayan she goes up to, um to where stanbury is and one-on-one -on -one, she apologizes to her um she says oh we're both successful in our own way blah 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 um and stanbury she's like i'm just gonna sleep it off yeah so she just goes up to her room you know, she's really hurt by it, and so it kind of sucked. Um, Ayan, she said she, she did her part in, in the confessional. She's like, I did my part, you know, and she says, oh, I'm lucky it's in the 1800s because I made a white woman cry. Like, I, I would not be sitting here. <laughs> but, um, and Nina, she winds up leaving with Caroline Stanbury, you know. Um, the ladies want Stanbury to stay, but she's like, no, I'm just going to go to bed. It's fine. And Nina's like, oh, yeah, I'll go with her, you know. Um, and yeah, and then in, in turn, once they leave, the ladies start shit-talking Nina for, like, how she's moving. Um, essentially, they're like, I don't know why Nina left with Stanbury. I feel like, they, they feel as though if Nina had just, like, stayed at the dinner table at Stanbury, may have been more willing to stay. And it's like, that's not really true. Like, Stanbury was literally in the golf cart already by the time Nina, like, you know, went over there. Um... But yeah, and then uh, Lisa proceeds to call Nina a social climber. Um, and she again accuses her of shit-talking Stanbury like crazy before. And this is corroborated by Caroline Brooks as well. We see like, a little flashback of them both saying like, Nina was talking like cash money shit about Stanbury. Like, talking shit. And it's like, damn, bitch. Like, what could it have been? You know what I mean? Like... Because Nina did admit, she's like, oh, I didn't like Stanbury for the longest, but I was like, Nina must have been talking shit. But they're friends now, and they are sharing a room, and as Nina says later on, she's like, Stanbury was already gone. Like, me going to go support her isn't, like, she wasn't gonna stay, you know? Um, but yeah, so it's, 
some shit going on, and full disclosure again. So in this episode, I started to kind of feel more for, um, in terms of shifting dynamics, like what things shifted. I've been starting to feel more, like, for, um, Stanbury in general. Not in, like, Stanbury versus Ayan. I still love Chanel Ayan. It's just, I'm still, call I'm still gonna call her out for, you know, uh, making a problem out of nothing at the table of Stanbury. You know what I mean? Like, just, I like her, but it's like, girl, you messed up. Same thing as Lisa said, you know what I mean? But, um, I'm starting to have a few more for Stanbury in general. But, I'm also starting to kind of side-eye Lisa a little bit. I'm like, is Lisa Milan the true villain? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, I don't know. I I kind of like everyone in Dubai. Um, I'm kind of feeling, I feel as though she should definitely get a second season. Everyone, people have been talking shit about like, ooh, this first season's boring. But it's like, the first season of many a Housewives show has sucked. Yeah, I mean, season one of Potomac sucked. Season one of Miami sucked. Don't even get me started on season one of shit like Orange County and, you know, things like, and you know, to New York to an extent. Um, but anyways, whatever. Um, and I feel like they should keep the, the whole cast. I mean, keep bringing everyone back for a second season. I could see maybe demoting Nina to a friend of. I could see that maybe. Um, but I don't really want that. You know what I mean? I feel like, just be frank about it. You know, we need, because... We need that Middle Eastern representation, you know what I mean? Like, keep at least keep them on for a little bit, you know what I mean? We're in Dubai, we should have some Middle Eastern girls on there, you know what I mean? Um, that's how I feel, at least. But, um, but yeah, anyways, that was a whole tangent. Um, so anyways, it's now the end of dinner. Um, Stanbury, when she's back at the room, she calls Sergio, she, like, fa um, she doesn't FaceTime, she just calls him. Um, and yeah, she's kind of venting to him. He tells she's emotional, and he's providing comfort and stuff, but, um... But Sergio sounds so sad. He really does. I was like, oh, like he's, I don't know. Um, I thought it was, was kind of a cute little moment. Um, but yeah, and then the ladies, the ladies are all chilling still. Um, Sarah proceeds to tell Nina about like how the other ladies were taking issue with her at the table. And um, Ayan, she walks up and kind of, Ayan and Nina kind of engage in a conversation about it. And Ayan kind of accuses Nina about, of making it about herself. Um, I don't know, it was just kind of weird, because Ayan was like, Nina, I don't see why you left with Stanberry. Because if you think about it, Nina wasn't even with Stanberry in the room. She was out with the other girl at this time. So it's like, well, why did she leave? Yeah, I mean, um, but just for pride, comfort, support, whatever. Um, but yeah, so Ayan says Nina made it about herself, and then Lisa comes over, and she addresses, um, she brings up how Nina, she painted a bad picture of Stanberry in the past, and um, Nina says, she's like, oh, you know, like, it's, things change, you know, I got to know her better, and, um, and it isn't even about me being buddy-buddy with Stanberry, it's just about me, I would do this for anyone, you know, anyone who's being attacked at a table, I would, you know, stick up for them, or want to, like, support them, in a way, um, but yeah, and Lisa, she, in a confessional, she wonders if Nina, because remember, Lisa says that her whole, the whole reason that she, like, was, is apprehensive towards Stanberry, is because of what Nina would tell her. So Lisa's like, was Nina, like, you know, doing this on purpose? Did she try to turn me against Stanberry on purpose so she could swoop in to save the day and be the peacemaker kind of thing, you know? So Lisa's like, Nina, you know, we need to keep an eye on you. And it's like, Lisa, I'm keeping an eye on you, girl. You're like, Nina doesn't really do shit, but it's always the quiet ones you gotta look out for. But, I don't know, with Lisa, I'm just kind of like, hmm. But anyways, then everyone, San Stanberry, of course, she's still in her room. They all go outside to smoke hookah. Um, Nina brings up that she arranged for a fucking sound bath the next day. I'm like, oh my god. Not another fucking sound bath. Like, we've seen how many seasons of Housewives and shit have we seen? Like, we just saw one on Ultimate Girls Trip. There's one on Orange County not too long ago. I think there's one on Atlanta not too long ago either. Um, was there one Potomac? There, and there was one New York, I know, as well. It's tons of sound baths all over. Um, they had been on Beverly Hills at some point. Um, but yeah, anyways, carrying me if I'm wrong. Alex, there's tons of sound baths. I'm, I'm like, oh, not another sound bath. Not another one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was hanging out. And then we see Brooke. She's all zoned out smoking hookah. And it was like, bitch. It reminded me of, like, when I was, when I was in high school, you know, like, I was at a friend who, like, would smoke hookah and stuff, so I'd do it with him, and I don't know, if you're, like, if you're, like, dehydrated, you're always kind of dehydrated, if you think about it, um, 
But if you're, like, dehydrated, you get, like, lightheaded and shit. I have to, ooh, I can just imagine after, like, drinking. I mean, if you don't drink water during dinner and how you, or the lightheadedness and shit. That's what Brooke's kind of feeling on. At least what it looks like. But anyways, and that's um, day three of Nure Island. And we, this is the last day. Uh, we see ladies packing and Stanbury. She's dealing with impromptu moving shit because the house that she's living in at the moment, it, um, she's renting it. But um, someone else bought it and I guess it was still on the market this whole time. Someone else bought it and so she has to move. So she's dealing with that. She ha- um, dealing with all the particulars and shit. Um, then Lisa and Brooks, they're together in the bathroom. Uh, I believe they're g- getting ready, you know, in the little, um, powder room area or whatever. They're speculating on why Ayan was, like, triggered the night before, and they will kind of agree that they feel as though Ayan felt put into a box and felt as though Caroline was, like, a Stanberry was, like, um, oh, you're just a model. Like, she just felt belittled in a way. But again, that was, like, not what happened. You know what I mean? It's, like, that's not the case. Again, maybe it was different in person, you know what I mean? We don't see it from a certain angle, but from what we are seeing as a viewer, that's not what fucking happened, you know? <laughs> we then see Ayan, she's on the phone with Chris, and she's just venting about the night before. And we said she clearly, like, misread the situation. She tells Chris, Stanbury was bragging about her money, and then she said what all the girls do, like, oh, you do this, and you do that. And then she asked me, oh, and Ayan, and what do you do? It's like, none of that happened. Like, that didn't happen. They weren't even talking about you. They weren't even talking about jobs. They were... Car- St- Caroline Brooks was talking... They were talking about, like, her investments and, and, like, how her exes were investing. Like, they weren't even talking about Ayan. You know what I mean? Like, it that was not... It's so... Like, she literally made it about herself. You know what I mean? That, it's just like That's why I laugh at Ayan telling Nina... Oh, you getting up made it about yourself. Like, no, girl, you made the situation about yourself, you know? And I don't know. Um, again, none of that shit happened on the camera. It was like, girl, what? Like, totally random. And she's complaining to Chris about how Stanberry puts her down. Both Stanberry and Ayan fuck the other puts her down, you know? Um, and Ayan proceeds to, um, she puts Stanberry down the confessional. She's like, Oh, you know, she's just an influencer. Like, I've worked I've worked much harder than her. Like, she's an influencer. And it's like, so there's kind of some truth to what Stanberry said. You know, in order to, you know, Ayan feels put down by Stanberry. So to put, lift herself up, she's like, oh, I am great. I'm a, I'm a model. You're just a fucking influencer. So she puts Stanberry down. And I think it just wasn't, it's a clear misinterpretation, miscommunication, as Nina said earlier, like, Nina hit it on the head, you know, she was like, this is just a misunderstanding, let's settle, let's simmer down. Um, yeah, and Chris is comforting her, and Anna gets emotional, says she's tired of explaining who she is 24-7. She gets really emotional, begins crying, and, um, yeah, she says she's gonna talk to Stanberry, so that's, we have that to look forward to. We didn't see the sound bath, uh, Brooks, she's tripping because, um, she, like, hears a bee, she, like, sees a bumblebee. And she winds up being like, oh my god, there are bees. Oh, because she's, like, extremely allergic to bees and she doesn't have her EpiPen, I guess. I'm like, are you always... I don't think I'm allergic to anything. At least not that I, like, found out about. But it's like, are you... if you're that allergic to bees, like, you need to, you need to carry that bitch around. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then uh, we see Sergio, after after the sound bath, Sergio, he, like, makes a surprise appearance on a jet ski. If you don't know it's him at first, you see his dude on a jet ski, like, woo! And they get up to go see, and they're like, oh, that's Sergio. And um, everyone thinks it's cute, but um, Ayan and Lisa, they're all hot and bothered about it. Lisa's like, I don't want this male energy around me. It's like, girl, he's not here to see you. Sergio's not here to see you. You know, I don't know. It's like, girl, calm down. Ayan then goes inside. She, like, storms off, and we see her crying in the room. Um, Lisa and Brooks are there comforting her, and... Ayan feels like, oh, you know, we have an argument and she puts me down and she calls her husband to come rescue her and she's just crying. It's like, I should call my husband, like, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it was very much, remi- it reminded me of, like, last season of Atlanta when um, Kenya brought Brooklyn over, she brought Brooklyn on her to the South Carolina trip and Candy and it was like, oh, I can't believe you brought your daughter, and I would have brought my daughter if that were the case. Like, you wouldn't have brought your daughter. It was Candy and Portia. Candy and Portia were bitching because Kenya wanted to bring uh, Brooklyn. She brought Brooklyn. And it was like, Ayan's complaint is like, 
I don't know. It was just like, girl, what? And then Lisa and Brooks, they turn into this like, oh, you know, um, Caroline Stanbury, this white woman, you know, who gets into this argument and she has to bring her partner over right away. But Ayan, she's expected to be on her own. It's like, no one's telling Ayan to have to call. Like, from what we see, Stanbury didn't even call um, Sergio. Hell, Stanbury probably didn't want Sergio to come, but he was just like, no. My baby's crying. I'm going to go see her. And I don't know. As I was like, like, why are you mad that like, oh, she, her husband came and he surprised her. Why can't my husband? At least I was like, honest. Lisa's just like, why is he here? Which I understand that. But Ayan was like, oh, my husband should be here too. And it's like, okay. Like, it's, I don't know. Because, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? Let me know what you thought about the whole situation. I don't know. I was just like. So Ayan's upset that Sergio came to Stanbury's rescue because her husband didn't do that for her or, like, couldn't do that. It's, I don't know. It's just very odd. Um, and, yeah, but meanwhile, Stanbury says she's very glad and grateful that Sergio um, came through and that he lifted a weight off of her shoulders. She is in great spirit. So I'm glad, you know, because, again, this is her trip. This is a gift she got for her wedding that she could have done with her kids, but she did it with the cast. You know what I mean? Um... So, I don't know. I'm glad that Sergio came, to be honest. Um, it was a nice little surprise. I'm not mad at it, you know. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. Let me know what you thought about it down below, though. We had a little fast-forward to Sunset. Um, Ayan, she asked Stanbury to talk. And Ayan says that um, her successful comment had nothing to do with finances. And Stanbury is like, you said successful in every way. And Ayan's like, no, but I didn't mean finances. Everywhere means other things, like providing, like helping your family out. Like, I, I put my brother and sister to college. I did that, did that. And I was like, she just didn't really make sense. I was like, it still ties in the finances. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, but um, Ayanta is like, oh, I'm very proud of myself and you make me feel like I'm just a model. Stanbury says, she's like, oh, I wasn't putting you down. I wasn't doing that at all. And um, there's some banter going on, but essentially Stanbury kind of sets the record straight. Ayan apologizes for taking it the wrong way. And Stanbury says that Ayan shouldn't have to feel defensive talking to friends. She's like, if we're friends, you shouldn't have to feel like I'm trying to attack you at every second, you know? Um, Ayan says that she'll do better and just felt belittled. And Stanbury is like, why the fuck would I belittle you in a conversation that I'm having about, that we are that we as a group are having about empowering women? And mind you, Stanbury was trying to... Um, empower Brooks and so she's like we're talking about empowering women why would I belittle you as just a model like that's you know um but yeah and then they wind up um Stanbury says Leon has to be less defensive with her and Stanbury she agrees to do so and they cheers and then go inside to pack that's essentially what comes out of it but it doesn't feel like it's fully resolved and we found later that it really isn't but um you can kind of sense it in the air, you know what I mean? We're then back in Dubai. We see Stanbury and Sergio. They're unpacking their temporary apartment. Um, Stanbury gives an IVF update. She's just kind of doing the hormone ejections right now. They're trying to get ready to um, go in and get some of the eggs out. Um, and she kind of just speaks on how ignorant Sergio is of the whole experience. Like, he doesn't know anything. Um, yeah, and later on, we found that he thinks the menstrual cycle is every two weeks. And, it, like, he, he doesn't know shit about anything. Um, she has him do, like, this thing where he... She tapes, like, a watermelon to his stomach and cantaloupes to his chest. And she's like, oh, so you can experience what it feels like to be pregnant. It's some, like, cartoon shit. You know, it's very... It's kind of dumb. Stanbury kind of... I mean, Brooks, she points out that it's like... Girl, what are you doing? Because um, Brooks comes over for an impromptu visit. But yeah, so Brooks, she actually goes through to um, basically ask Stanbury how she's doing after the whole Ayan drama at um, Nuri Island. Um, and Stanbury says that she feels as though Ayan, that she, um, that she'll like throw a dagger and she'll like hide her hands and be like, oh, I didn't mean, um, I didn't mean it like that. English isn't my first language. Um, I, I didn't mean, I didn't mean it that way. And it's like, I don't think Ayan does that, you know, like, um, I don't know, like, I don't think she, we've heard her use, like, that excuse, you know, like, we, yeah, we've heard Ayan, like, she'll mix, she'll, like, butcher jokes or, like, um, 
idioms and like sayings, you know? Um, that's fairly common. Like, it's not like an unheard of thing. It's like some things are fucking weird, you know? Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't really get behind the whole like stammering, like, oh, I feel like Ayan uses her, um, ESL status as like an excuse to say mean shit. Cause I was like, I don't think that's what's happening. Yes, Ayan had like a miscommunication the other night and she like essentially heard what she wanted to hear and went after Stanberry. But it's like every other bitch on every other franchise franchise does that. You know, it's like you hear you hear what you want to hear, you're in an argument, you know what I mean? I don't think that's a specific thing to Chanel Yan. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, again, Stanberry was kind of growing on me a bit. I can't agree with this. Same with the Ayan thing, yeah. I'm so with Ayan. I don't agree with how she handled that whole sit down at the table. You know, you, you can like people and still kind of, you know, be like, get on them for certain things. And I say that because some people were disliking my last video because I was like, Chanel Ayan. And no, you're wrong. I'm cool with a dislike. That's why I always say rate. Because like, girl, a dislike, a dislike is good too. You know, like show that engagement, bitch. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was like, Chanel Ayan creates conflict out of no one. People are like, oh, you're shit talking Chanel Ayan. It's like, I still like her. But yeah, it was this was out of nowhere. Dumbass. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, there's a bit more discussion on the matter. And then Brooke, she proceeds to say that she thinks that Ayan is, um, easily influenced by Lisa specifically. And Brooke says that Lisa dislikes Stanberry and that Ayan is doing Lisa's dirty work. So it's like, hmm, like, this is when I started, it was like, okay, Brooks is, like, on to something, I feel. And yes, they say Brooks is messy, but it's like, bitch, she's still on to something, you know? Um... But yeah, and then, again, there's some more banter. We found that Sergio thinks a menstrual cycle is every two weeks. And it's like, oh my goodness, like, that's actually supposed to be good, Stanberry, because that, oh my gosh. It's like, that's, that's like, just dumb. You know what I mean? It's just like, I feel like everyone would, like, every, most high schoolers, I don't know, man. Anyways, um, the last scene is with Sarah. She brings Ayan to, um... Her hypnotherapist. And this is, uh, this was talked about earlier in the season. Um, I believe it was in episode two or three. Um, it was when Sarah and Ayan kind of had a sit down opening up together and Sarah was like, oh, you should come see my hypnotherapist. Like it's, um, a really great thing. Ayan agreed to it. And so now they're, they're doing it. So they're going in together and, um, while they're sitting down with the lady, her name's PETA, like, like the fucking people for the ethical treatment of animals. I don't know if that's a traditional, like, Emirati or, like, Hebrew name or something, but her name, her name is Pita. Um, and, yeah, and Ayan and Sarah, they're, like, gushing about each other. Ayan's like, oh, I'm here because of this one, and I'm in a positive mood come around her. And Sarah's like, oh, I'm just so proud of Ayan for coming, and I'm proud that she wants me to be with her on this couch next to her. And they're just so, like, it was, I don't know, they're just so happy to be with each other. Um... With the therapist, Ayan, she begins... So, she's a hypnotherapist, but they aren't doing hypnotherapy yet. It was just, like, like opening therapy, like, just kind of general, um, like, regular therapy for now. Um, Ayan begins by discussing that she feels like she never felt love from her father. Um, which kind of opens up her backstory. She says she's, she was born, um, in Kenya, but very close to the border with Uganda. Um, stuff like that. It's about her backstory and stuff. Um, the therapist asks her about to uh, try to recall between the ages of zero and five. Like, when you think about that time frame, what do you, um, what comes to mind? And Ayan, she starts crying and she says she remembers pain, sadness, beatings, and her mom crying. Like, that's what she remembers from that time period. Um, the therapist then proceeds to go to the next life stage, asking about ages uh, five to twelve. Um, and then Ayan, she gets emotional again, and she reveals that, um, when she was five, um, she went through female genital mutilation, and it's, um, a lot more common in, you know, Eastern Africa in that general region, um, but, yeah, so we learn about that, she says that, uh, grandma and her, her grandma and her aunt took Ayan, who was five, and her older sister, who was Six and a half, I believe she said. Um, and yeah, and they went, and it was, um, you know, the the kind where they, like, sew her up. And so she had to get unsewn as an adult in order so she could have sex with her husband. Um, yeah, it was a very traumatic conversation. Um, 
she was bringing this conversation to a forefront to the a platform that we we don't really talk about it really at all you know so um she's bringing the conversation in and um ayan she speaks on how her dad tried to sell her off at 14 but her older sister who has been 15 and a half around the time she like stopped her and um and Ayan says she has a great life. She has a lot of things to be grateful for, but she's just talking about the sad... She's been through some shit, and she's reflecting on some of the sad things. Um, and so, yeah, it's a really heavy moment. Um, of the castmates, the only one who publicly, like, praised Ayan or, like, kind of supported her for talking about the subject was Lisa. Um, which... I don't know, because I, I know that Ayan and Lisa are kind of on their island right now, and the other four are kind of on their own thing. I don't know if I'm how I feel about that stuff. Like, because, again, um, even if it was Stanberry, she could have been like, oh, despite our differences, what we're going through, um, I am proud of you as a woman, like, for speaking on this, you know, terrible practice, you know? But anyways, and again, um, like, the Shade Room posted about this. Like, it's um, made on its way onto outlets and stuff. So, um, she's, Chanel Yan's really putting, bringing this topic into the conversation. And she says that um, if it's her duty to use her platform to spread this message, and that so be it. And I hope as we see her, she, we see her, like, maybe start, like, a, a charity or be, become involved with the movement, like, I can only see that as being a nice, like, little side thing that she tries to jump into. Or she doesn't, she shouldn't have to, like, do that. But I think that she wants to, you know? She wants to, um, you know, use her platform for that. So, you know, more power to her, you know? It's, um, but yeah, so. Then Sarah winds up, um, stepping out of the room and the hypnotherapy session begins. Um, it's about 20 minutes or so. And, um, Ayanna winds up feeling great afterwards, um, the therapist, she has Ayan count backwards from 50 to zero and then picture this, like, she's in this meadow and there's this tree, this magnificent tree that's the tree of her life. And she sees, like, the branches and leaves and all of their, her experiences in her life. But some of these trees and, or some of the branches and leaves don't look right. And so it's about kind of clearing those um, areas, cutting them off. And it's, this whole thing. And then we see her and Sarah, they talk about about um, the hypnotherapy afterwards. Um, and yeah, there's kind of, t um, I answer that she feels just kind of lightheaded and Sarah's like, yeah, it's kind of draining to an extent, you know? Um, and she's talking and then with some humor, Sarah tells her, she's like, oh yeah, just go home with some classical music and just unwind and relax. And Anne's like, yeah, or Nicki Minaj. And so I was like, not that, not, not that yet. Like, that's a little too, too, too lit. <laughs> but um, it's a little funny moment. And there's a nice humorous ending to, like, again, a pretty heavy session. Um, but yeah, so um, that's it for the episode. So a lot went down. Um, we have, next week is the season finale. So, but yeah, this late into the season, because again, we're barely on episode 11, so I mean, so I'm starting to get some shifting dynamics and stuff, but, um, but yeah, all in all, I would, I would be in support of Dubai getting a second season, I think everyone should come back, um, maybe not add any newbies yet, let's, let's keep this group and see how they continue to move, maybe add, um, add in a friend of or two, we didn't really get any friends of this season, you know, but that's what I think should, should happen. What about you? What do you think? How, what would you like to see? Um, would you like to see Dubai get a second season? Would you like to see any changes to the cast? We want someone added. Again, I think it should be the same people and maybe add a, a friend of or two. Uh, but no full-time housewives, at least in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so let me know what you thought about the whole episode. Uh, be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching. Bye.